one of the things which i have been noticing is there is hybrid or whatever people assume that the language in which you are speaking the audience understands and that may or may not be true many of your multinationals you deal with distributors dealers oems across the world or even in india the person from ho is speaking in english and everyone may not understand english that's a very common problem not just at it level at all levels so here is a feature you should try i have connected to internet it may or may not work but let's try so suppose i am speaking in english and most of my audience understands hindi what do i do i go to english by default it is english us change it to indian accent and then i'm going to change this to hindi we can try some other languages later this is during a presentation and then next step is to say start subtitles so now whatever i am speaking is getting to the data center and it is getting translated live now right now the limitation is that there is only one language i can choose if my audience understand more than one language then i'm stuck even for that there is a feature but we'll talk about that later you can check it up it's called present live where you show qr code to the audience in the beginning then on their mobile or their device browser doesn't matter they can choose a language of their choice so you have multilingual transcription live so if you are using in multi con multilingual context anywhere not just at your level every user who understands or need this please tell them this it's a brilliant feature i have not been checking how is the translation is it okay some hindi experts here is it okay or not <laughs> okay so right now i'm going to stop it let's go to the next topic someone was actually asking me last time i covered the importance of managing passwords not just for it team but everyone ideally should use a password manager which password manager up to you last time i talked about lastpass because i use it but as all of you know i don't sell any software i am not a dealer or distributor for any software or hardware so instead of showing one name this is the latest comparison of password managers go through it all the links also will be in the description of the video so you don't have to take any uh, photographs because this will not give you the link so that's that please use a password manager if you are not using it if you are proud about your prowess of miraculously creating unique passwords you have already been hacked please understand everything this is a beautiful tool absolutely unknown i don't know if i uh, mentioned it last time it's called voidtools.com download it it's freeware it's lightning fast search on windows it doesn't do search inside the context it's only file level search but it's absolutely fast and i discovered it few years back and i can't live without it it auto starts and i use it every day hundreds of times beautiful search syntax as well very very simple but extremely effective because we spend at least 10 minutes every day searching for files if not more and still we don't find the right version now if any of you are creating transcripts for spoken things you may have a youtube channel you may have e learning you may have learning and development content being developed and you have a diverse workforce you need to transcribe now this is a microsoft site i'm sure there are other sites also but i use it that's why i'm talking about it's called videoindexer.ai all that you have to do is upload the audio or video doesn't matter for this you require a free account gmail account any account will do and in that you get some free things and then you have to pay but it is very very economical so what it does is whatever is the audio it transcribes and you can actually see it and immediately you can download either a text transcript or srt or vtt files which typically go with youtube or vimeo or any other video editing software for baking in the subtitles and there are 65 languages supported so you just upload once and get 65 different transcripts simple and effective now those who have been following ai always i'm sure you know dali 2 amazing stuff you just type a text description of what you want and it creates amazing images this open source the simplest way of doing is go through midjourney.com log in there and then on the discord channel you can type a description and then it will generate so as an example what i have written here is toyota supra on mount fuji that's the description i wrote and this is what i created it automatically creates and then you can specify variations and context and this is a very short description people write paragraphs of description and every time it tries to understand the context and build something beautiful many people for normal business graphics youtube thumbnails 
social media graphics are using this as the default rather than PowerPoint or Canva now because the images are really striking and that's what we want in social media. We want immediate hook. And now this has been introduced two days back. There is a new software coming called Microsoft Designer. This is an implementation of that. So what is written there? Cake with berries, bread, pastries for the fall. And this image was auto-generated in few seconds. This was the demo which was shown. There is a public preview going on. You can sign up. There is a queue. And very soon it will be a part of, I think, Office 365. So again, this doesn't mean designers are out of vogue. When email came, we thought paper will go out of, right? Nothing has happened. Everyone is still using paper. So it's not uh, competing. It is complementing. Now, mouse is something I have always been harping on, which mouse doesn't matter. But many people, especially end user level, who extensively work on all types of tools on laptop, they are struggling with that touchpad and that 100% accelerates arthritis. So please use a mouse. That's the first thing. And all of us are senior people. We do a lot of stuff. The most professional mouse available today is called MX Master. Again, I don't sell it, but I've been using it for years. And the single most important thing, which you may not have noticed, is we scroll a lot in life. Whether it is a web page or a report or whatever, we scroll a lot. And every scroll is one action of your finger. It's going to die very soon. Whereas this wheel is a flywheel. So you just touch it once, one scroll effort, and it keeps rotating. You just stop it. It's difficult to describe the benefit. You try it out and you will never, uh, you will say, why did I not know this earlier? It's a brilliant. And this other wheel is horizontal scroll. If you work on horizontal things like Excel, this is a lifesaver. Where there are infinite canvas kind of applications, horizontal scroll is always a pain. In case you don't have it, remember Alt page down. That also does horizontal scroll in Excel. Now, second monitor, which monitor? It doesn't matter. You have to have a second monitor at our level. We work extensively, however great your laptop is. I'm saying this, but for 30 years, I've been traveling. I was never at home, so there was no question of second monitor. I'm always on stage somewhere. But during COVID, I got a PC, very high-end PC, and then I realized the second monitor is an absolute lifesaver, not just during presentations, when I'm working or any kind of activity. You have a laptop, you have a small second monitor also. Doesn't matter. Always use a second monitor. Now I'm so used to it that I bought a laptop which has a second monitor. So what I'm showing is my second monitor. What I'm doing on the first monitor, you will not see. So that's how addictive it is and that's how productive it is. Now Edge, there are lots of browsers and you were talking about Chrome. I also use Chrome. But if you are using Microsoft Context anywhere, Office 365, multiple accounts, many of the CIOs will have that. There is something called Edge Profiles. It integrates with the Microsoft ecosystem extremely well. I have so many accounts for different organizations, customers, demos, different types of demos, so many tenants I have to manage. So this is first login, create profiles. And when a link comes, it automatically asks you which profile should it open in. This is a very common problem. We get a link in email, it opens in the wrong profile, then have to copy paste the link. It's a huge time saver. So many people who use Edge don't know there are profiles, so please use Edge profiles. NVIDIA broadcast. NVIDIA broadcast, if you have an NVIDIA card, either on laptop or desktop, many people have good cards, but they don't download this software. It's a free software from NVIDIA, and it's an absolutely beautiful uh, graphic card driven AI system. It allows you to remove background in a meeting much better than Zoom or Google Meet or in Teams for that matter. And it also removes audio noise. So during COVID, they decided to renovate. And for one and a half months, there was continuous drilling. And during those two months, I must have done at least 100 sessions. Not a single customer heard drilling noise. It's that good. Because it's hardware based, it's on board, there's no internet access required for that purpose. It's absolutely outstanding. So if you have NVIDIA card somewhere, use NVIDIA broadcast. It's a free download. Okay, now if you are into audio, in some form or shape, the input and output devices become very limiting. If you want to connect something to something, for example, line in, you want to give as input to a mic, that is impossible unless you have some external hardware. 
This is a beautiful, it's not new, it has been there for at least a decade, if not longer. It's a virtual cable. So it becomes another source in your mic and output. And literally, like you would patch from one hole to another in a mux, like that, you can actually do a virtual cable. It's free and it's really useful. Now, if you want to automate things and all of us are trying to minimize, like I said, how many times people are pressing brakes, are they doing it optimally? At every small level, we are trying to op optimize. So shortcuts, any kind of sophisticated shortcut mechanism you want to do, there's a fully scripted open source system, completely free, and very, very sophisticated shortcuts can be made. To give you one example, uh, in Zoom, suppose you have to mute, there is a Alt-A, I think. In Teams, it is Shift, Control, M, but that window has to be active. Now, Zoom gave an option that even if the window is not active, you can use that. Teams doesn't give. Some random other application for some other purpose may not give. So this allows you to route that to a particular window. So it's really sophisticated, little bit of scripting, and it's outstanding. And if you have something like a separate uh, MIDI controller outside, you can map the keys as well, like Stream Deck Live. So that's auto hotkey. Again, completely free. Whiteboard. All of us do meetings. In physical meetings, in smallest of conference room, there is a physical whiteboard. But in online meetings, many apps don't provide a proper whiteboard. Teams does, but many people don't know how good it is. So please start using whiteboard. If you have Teams, it is built in and it's outstanding. I don't have to teach you how to use a whiteboard, but there is something which even people who use the whiteboard in Teams don't know. So there are 42 beautiful templates available in this. So these are for affinity diagrams, brainstorming, empathy map, cost benefit analysis. One click and you get that set up for you. These are the common reasons why we do whiteboarding in the first place. So just by reading the list, I understood some new use cases. So it's a learning experience also. So just go through the available templates and make sure people who need it know about it and start using it. And you don't need any special software. It works on browser, mobile, as well as desktop. It's a part of Teams. Canva. I have been, as you know, extensively using PowerPoint for my entire life, but I am now actually using Canva extensively because the amount of user focus they have in terms of understanding the user intent. If any of you understand user interface design well, you will know how difficult it is to understand user intent and create great user interface. This is the best example of amazing user interface, I could say. The same thing could have potentially been done in some other tools much better, but here you get it done in much lesser time and the output looks as though I was a designer. That's a bonus. It's not about only the operational efficiency. We spend hours and hours on PowerPoint and then we slide the kawai dikta hai. That doesn't happen here because there are lots of templates and once you go into the system, you don't have to pay anything extra. So again, I don't sell it, but I love it. So. And for social media people, this is a very common problem. I create a YouTube thumbnail, it's 16 by 9. The same thumbnail I have to create for Instagram, it's 9 by 16. Same thing for Twitter or Facebook, it is square, one by one aspect ratio. Here in two clicks, you can resize and little bit of changes. Amazing stuff. A simple video editor for end user level for LND people who create video content, ClipChamp. It's a part of Windows now, you can download it from Microsoft Store. There is a paid version, but the free version is absolutely usable. Now, if you want more professional video editing, traditionally you will use FCP on Mac or uh, Premiere. But if you have not explored Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve, please do it. It's a professional software, Dune, Thor, Doctor Strange. These kind of movies are made on that. So it's that level. And the free version also creates 4K output. So there is no limit, no restrictions. Professional, not just video editing, audio editing, special effects, and color correction, all four in one tool. Amazing and free. So that's DaVinci Resolve. And how much time do I have? Yeah, I have. Ah, I'm going to Okay, next. All of us, not you probably personally, but you have to put screenshots somewhere for documentation, for learning and development. The best, and this is not a new tool. This is there at least for 18 years if I'm not mistaken, but no other tool has become better than this. If you want extensive screen or video capture, Snagit is the way to go. It is a paid tool, but it's absolutely worth the money. For your documentation team, support team, this is absolutely necessary. So Snagit, its uh, company name is TechSmith. 
Now another one, this is a Microsoft tool. Zoom it. If you know Swiss internal, this was written by Mark Rusnovich long, long back. A new version of that just came three days back during Ignite, where he actually added a feature by writing code and implemented it. So this is the latest version. And one of the latest features, Zoom it is basically for zooming in and zooming out, which is what I've been doing. And this also allows annotation on top of it. And now it also allows recording of the screen, which was not there. I think few months back that was added. So for a demonstration purpose, you have seen so many technical presentations, because Zoom is a So Zoom is a presentation and communication tool, please understand. Not Zoom as in the meeting one, this one, Zoom it. The next note, this is what I'm actually using. Everything needs to be timed. So this is my timer, which is currently going on. And I have 13 minutes left. And it's not only during presentations I use it. I use it to time myself. How do you become productive? You do some job and then you suddenly realize, oh, I'm sitting on this Excel sheet or whatever for two hours. So I have a timer which auto runs and decrements every 15 minutes. And there's a very shrill, loud, irritating beep that wake me up saying, am I still spending time correctly or not? That's a simple but effective way of timing yourself. You may continue to do the job beyond that beep, but it wakes you up. So simple, effective, it's a very old tool. Make sure when you go to that link, it's secure because there is a non-secure version also. I will give you the link. So that's X note. It's a very arcane tool, 20 year old and still works. Then, oh, simple but very important, all of us do have to do bandwidth checking all the time. You are in an event, first thing I did here is I check the bandwidth. Which tool do you use? So many tools available. Please use fast.com. It's a lightweight tool, it has no ads, it has no fluff and it gives you exactly what you wanted. And why is it so ad free? The person who created it would want ad revenue. Why would they not put Google ads or Amazon ads? Because it's made by Netflix. The biggest support issue Netflix gets is HD name, Ilraya, 4K, whatever name. So now the troubleshooting engineer needs a reliable uh, bandwidth checker, which is completely lightweight. And that is why this is a good tool to check bandwidth. Finally, one note. While I was sitting there, I was taking notes, but I was not typing. Keep one note on. One note mobile dictation is absolutely outstanding. Many dictation tools, when you press the button and talk, of course it will the convert audio to text. But when you stop talking, it shuts off. Again, you have to press. This one keeps on. And it has many beautiful features and absolutely good quality. So I was coming in the rickshaw right now. I took in an auto, which was a silencer. It understood. So it's very, very good. Try it out. So that's one note, mobile. If you do streaming of any sort, use OBS. There are many other tools, but this is free and most extensively supported with a very large plugin library. One of the commonest things I'm asked nowadays is we are doing a live meeting or a Teams meeting and we want to broadcast it on say YouTube or Facebook. How do you do that? So there you have to get the output from Teams and then give it to OBS or similar tool. Completely free and very well supported by third parties as well. And how do you get the output from Teams to OBS or any other RTMP? That is a NDI. This is again complete freeware. It's called Network Device Interface. It may sound weird, but this revolutionized video creation. This is broadcast class video management on normal gigabit Ethernet. Earlier, we had to have extensive, very costly cables, big, huge equipment to connect one video source to another and to send it another to the production studio would be a pain. All this has become absolutely easy and so many tools are available, all of them are free. And one immediate use case is once you install it and enable NDI and Teams, that can directly go to OBS as an input. Not just the overall meeting, individual viewer, individual speakers, video can also be a separate source. So you can actually do a scene creation in OBS. If you want to create quick 3D things because people are tired of 2D, although I have not shown you anything 3D, but very quick creation of 3D objects is done in 3D paint. This is not professional 3D, it is consumer 3D. But if you put something 3D and this is compatible with PowerPoint, so if you put a 3D object created here as GLB in PowerPoint, you can actually animate it. So the same old boring PPTs become a little more exciting. 
But if you want more professional, because metaverse is coming, whether you are in consumer, commercial, or um, industrial metaverse, you will need some 3D skills. So that these are the options available. In some cases, you have to use all three, but somewhere you have to start. If you have to start some learning something completely new and is going to be relevant in future, choose one of them. This is Blender. Many movies are made on this. Oh, sorry, this is uh, Unreal. It's a gaming engine evolved into a full-fledged 3D system. Now, one of the common problems we have is you are in a team's meeting and there are 100 participants coming and obviously everyone comes late. So, when they come, they Right? Now, that is the thing which the organizer should have said, don't enable announcing of people. But very often the organizer is either dumb or absent or inaccessible. Now, what do you do? You can't change that. You are a presenter or whatever you are. So Windows G gives you, Windows G is by the way, Xbox game overlay. It has nothing to do with Teams. But this is the fastest way of seeing your audio, video, audio, mic and output input. So this is the mix, that is output and voice is the input. So in the mix, you will see Teams twice. One of them is that D. So you figure out which one is that and mute it. That is the practical example. But this also allows you to do a screen recording. This is designed for high end high frame rate gaming recording. So the recording quality is very good. So also another use, Windows G. All Windows machines have it, unless you have disabled it. Then another one, I'm not going to show it, but all of us have been presenting for decades, but I tried it. This is an AI based presenter coach. All that you have to do is go to slideshow menu and say presenter coach, works on browser as well. And then you open a regular PPT and you present it as though you are presenting with an audience. It just sits there quietly, listens to you, understands what you are doing, and then it gives you a dashboard, which is absolutely phenomenal. This is applied AI. is there in every version of PowerPoint, including the browser. So what is it saying? This is just a demo. It's saying how long you spoke, how was your pace, how was your pitch, very monotonous, very uttering word language, uh, very reading out what was written on the screen. So even though we are fairly good at this, I learned a lot from this. So every user in your company should be exposed to this to communicate better internally as well as externally. And finally, if you do a lot of flow charting, yes, we use Visio. Visio has become a part of Office 365. But there is a use case where programmatically you want to create a uh, flow chart. This is Mermaid Live, which is a demo version. This is basically an API. The implementation demo is Mermaid Live. So notice what is written here. What is written here? I have just written a connects to B, B connects to C, C connects to D in this syntax. And it has actually created that flowchart dynamically. Now, any other flowcharting software will allow you to do this, of course, but not in this form. You'll have to programmatically take control of the canvas, create a shape, add another shape programmatically, connect the two. This is much simpler. Of course, this is programmatically possible. This is a demo, but I use it a practical use case. Many people are creating forms whether it is Google Forms or Microsoft Form or SurveyMonkey, and we have branching logic. Very often in a complex form, the branching logic itself becomes confusing. So I wrote a tool which looks at the branching logic and creates a flowchart so that I understand what I did. And that's where I used it. I am sure you will have more use cases. Finally, yes, Windows 11 is there, but I still like Windows 7 Start Menu. So if you want a good Windows 7 Start Menu, this is called Open Shell. It's free. I'll give you the link. Go to GitHub, download it, and just replaces the standard Windows Start menu with good old Windows 7 menu. And there are a lot of variations available. And the last one, many, many times, I'm sure everyone faces this. Disk full of suddenly. Abhi sab slow ho gaya. Abhi sa delete karo? Humko hai which one is unnecessary? Which folder is occupying too much space? And then it's a disaster. So this is again freeware, WinDIR stack. Give it some time. It will give you a visual understanding of proper multiple types of charts of where your data is. And then you can quickly manage the show. There is a server version also. But I'm talking right now about the consumer version. So it gives you a visual display of types of files, folders, which are occupying too much space. So with that, I come to an end. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Ah, no problem. No.